So, um, who is Paul Roach? Oh, fuck. Gosh, I can't cuss, can I? Yeah, you can cuss uh, all you like. It's movement, Mag. He's just a guy, I think, just trying to find his way. I don't know. Like anybody else. Just go to work. Pay the bills, take care of business. Treat people right. Yeah, that's Paul Roach. I think I was riding my first wave on a bodyboard when I was about five years old. So that'd be like 31 years. That's like the most nostalgic thing about bodyboarding is just riding whitewash, you know? When you come in from a long session, you get the little reform all the way in, you're like doing little cutbacks back and forth. It reminds me of the old Aussie days. I had like three of those orange Aussies back in the day. It was pretty fun. Probably because I'm a freaking pompous, egotistical asshole who thinks like everybody needs to see me ripping all the time, you know? So I don't know. It's just you feel like a wanker when you go out and there's nothing going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what you can do and you, you know what you want to do, but Mother Nature doesn't always permit, you know? Whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to do pretty well. You know, be it in the water or work or playing music, anything, you know? Ah, something out there in the brush. You're always chasing the badger, you know? Once you find him, though, we didn't find him out there today. That's what I was looking for. When you don't find the badger, you get a little pissed off, you know? No, I just don't like to look at him. So, like, you catch me look for a second, and I'm like... So I always, like, look this way or look this way. Sometimes I'll be like, uh, or that. But another other way. You know? It's just kind of weird. <laughs> it's like a big eyeball staring at you, burning my soul. <laughs> It's like Sauron, you know? I feel like Frodo. Um, the so, burning eye. So, <laughs> I can fucking chew my face off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was like... I found out that I wasn't a competitive bodyboarder when I was like 16. And then the years that I did compete, that was just like... You know, swimming backwards the whole time. Um, I just didn't have that, that mentality in me. It's too stressed out, I get too worried about it. It's not in me. I mean, I'm competitive in the sense of when I'm, when I'm riding, I like to do my best and try to stand out, but in the comp itself, it's just there's so many different elements. It brings out a different side of the sport. And what is that side? The side that's not me. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. I'd fucking probably be rich right now if I did. It's hard to believe that, you know? Um, it's cool. It's flattering, you know. It makes me feel like a like a pretty uh, special man. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's it's. I think it's cool. I mean, but does it does that come with pressure though? Like you know today? Um, not really. Sometimes you know, like if I if I get recognized and I'm somewhere and I usually think the guys are staring at me because they want to fight me or something, and then they're like, "Hey, Paul," and I was like, "Oh shit." So, kind of aggressive at first, but you know, I, just, I don't think of myself as anything other than, you know, the next guy, so, um, yeah, sometimes it's a little weird, but, fuck, Ray ran over a wombat. <laughs> no, it's already dead. For an animal lover, I was really surprised, <laughs> and uh, I thought it was kind of mean, because I love wombats. No, funny story, uh, I guess just how many times we've had to shit in the woods, you know? <laughs> like, tag team shits in the woods. It's like, you gotta go, you gotta go. It's a good thing we got the porta potty here today, you know? Her name's Sayla. She's a smart kid, really down to earth. Um, acts just like me. It's pretty funny. It's like a little, uh, exact little replica of me. Except a girl. Yeah, pretty funny stuff. 12 years old now. I don't know. Papa Roach. Papa Roach. That's me. Let's, let's just get serious for a second. So, yep. you know when you are on the Tubes team, there was like um, Kyle and Todd DeGraff and all those guys were kind of like versatile riders? Yeah. And nowadays it's kind of like, it seems like there's like you're either a drop knee or you're prone. Or what's, what's your take on all that stuff and when did that all happen and what's the... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I missed out on a few years. I just kind of, things changed all of a sudden. You know, I kind of 
went into hiding and uh, everything was different, you know? A lot of people disappear, there's new guys. I always, you know, when I was when I was bodyboarding, I always wanted to just beat the hell out of the, the prone riders. Not physically, but like, I wanted to say, you know, what I'm doing on this is just as hard or harder than what you're doing. I don't, and I didn't want to win a contest in the drop knee event. I wanted to win in a bodyboard event. So that part to me is a little, you know, it's a little weird still, but I think it's it's good to get drop knees out of the woodwork, and this just makes more drop knees, so that's cool. But eventually, I think it's going to have to all form back together, you know? It's kind of one one big thing. And I'd love to see a drop knee just smash some prone riders in a contest, because for me, that's what it's all about. You know, I've never, never been a prone rider, so. Yeah, that was... That's fucking away. It's weird, man. It was actually went all the way to, like, the top of the to the top of the pyramid with them like Paul Roach we need you to ride prone more we need to make a prone board prone cells you know this and that and so they just want you to change a little bit that's kind of funky you know and that's uh, one of the reasons why my relationship with them ended so I think just everything has its moment you know like there's a time and a place for for any vehicle or any, any board you're riding and uh, I've always tried to be really open-minded my dad was a longboarder and a body surfer after that he got me in the water at a pretty early age and just you know was always open-minded I just think there's there's a time and a place for everything and I like to have all my boards ready to go you know be it a bodyboard or a surfboard or just go out for a swim you know to be in the ocean get to the point and I always end up on a different subject so I just think I'm I have a hard focus problem maybe a little ADD thing you know so I think people ask me things sometimes they want to hear a specific answer and I kind of sometimes could skate around it and go into a different subject but you're a good interview you got good questions I don't feel like anything cliche it's basically just a couple friends of mine and we started playing just uh, getting together once a week and <laughs> getting our stuff in a little music room and you know have some beers barbecue make songs up and just kind of led into a little bit more and we played a couple shows right before I came over here so it's going well it's just fun playing music that's another got a lyric got some lyrics can you sing no, tell some lyrics not the singer <laughs> no <laughs> not the singer but okay. uh, maybe when the face melter part evolves I'll have some lyrics for that because that's supposed to be my section of the band you know the other guys are kind of the sweater vest yeah, yeah, and I bring yeah, in the melt. So, <laughs> you know, the state of the sport here is so much is better than it is in America right, right now. Yeah. With just the respect yeah. and the uh, relationship uh, between surfers and bodyboarders so seems way tighter and it's, it's way, way more segregated in, in the states. Um, it's just everything's so image based, you know, and people. People are just cocky, you know? Cocky and they can't open their minds up to, to something different or new. And a lot of it too is, you know, overpopulation and maybe not the best of waves all the time and everybody's scrapping for the same piece of meat. So, I mean, that's obvious tension right there, but plan is right now, um, I got the Cabo trip coming up with Manny after this. And then uh, I think after that, my next uh, real trip would be Hawaii if that happens. Um, I didn't make it out there last year, or the year before, or the year before that. Probably the year before that too, it's been a little while. So, it'd be nice to get back over there, even though that's kind of like a hassle with all the people and stuff, but still some fun to serve to be had. That's all I know. <laughs>